The following worship service is paid for by Main Street Living. This grand, glorious picture finds its consummation, finds its completion in the resurrection on the last day. You see, that's the whole reason why Christ came in the first place, to undo death. His resurrection on Easter is the first fruits of which we will be part of that great harvest to come when Christ returns. This vision, this tapestry of the church is a picture of hope that is ours right now and not yet. A picture of hope for today and for tomorrow and for all eternity. The worship service will begin after opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 
Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes to us from the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation and from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb." And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson comes to us from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what, will, what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in Him purifies himself as He is pure. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel comes to us from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your re reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. 
This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. mercy and peace be with you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the first lesson this morning comes to us from the book of Revelation. In that book begins with these words, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show to his servants the things that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word and God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. So often we, when we talk about the book of Revelation, we, sing, we think of it as a, a plural, the book of Revelations. But this is a singular. It's a book, it's called Revelation. And it's all about the revealing of Jesus Christ. Throughout this book, John gives us and shows us fantastic visions of God's throne 
and Jesus who appears as a slaughtered lamb and yet lives and now rules at God's right hand. This is the preeminent vision that sets the stage for all the other visions that are to come. Some of these visions are very frightening. But throughout these visions, there is one thing that remains true, that the Lamb of God has conquered. He has conquered all, and he has conquered it all for you. This leads us to our text for today, where the Apostle John paints us a wonderful tapestry, a multi-layered picture of the church. In one part of the tapestry, we get a picture of the church triumphant in heaven. It's a grand and glorious picture. In this vision, we, uh, John describes it this way. He says, after this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands. Palm branches in their hands. It reminds us of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday where Jesus came to conquer our enemies of sin and death. Jesus has conquered it all. And we get a picture of the fruits of that conquering, the church triumphant. But you know, we get more than a picture of the church. We get to hear their song. And their song is this. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And this picture is brought to you and to me by the Lamb of God who has conquered. But there is still more to this picture. Then one of the elders addressed me, John says, who are these clothed in white robes and where they come from? And I said to him, sir, you know, and he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And here we have a picture of the church militant here on earth. This is a picture of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, leading to the last day when Jesus returns in glory. This is a picture of the hope that we have in Christ right now and the hope of what is not yet here. In the midst of this picture, I hope that you see yourself along with all those who believe in Christ here on earth and those who have died believing in the Lamb of God. Right now, we are on the church militant side of the picture. Today, we still live in a world that is full of sin and tribulation for God's people. Now, we might think that tribulation refers to the battle of Armageddon, but that's not even mentioned in our text for today. Instead, we see the whole church undergoing a time of tribulation before entering into glory. Every Christian goes through times of trial and testing in this world. Each Christian experiences persecution for following Christ. Some will lose their lives in this world for their confession of Christ and his salvation, while others may not lose their lives. But the battle is still the same. Satan and his dark forces are always seeking to lead you and me and all of God's people from Christ. He uses different methods and approaches from place to place and from time to time. But his goal is the same. He wants you and me out of God's kingdom and into his. And this is a battle that is fought each day. Some days are more intense than others, but it is a battle each day. Some of you may be experiencing an intense time right now in your life. What are the tribulations that 
you are or, or have experienced in your life, no matter what they are or have been, it has all been covered by the blood of the Lamb of God who has conquered all through His cross and resurrection. And He gives you that victory as He has washed you with His holy and precious blood in the waters of holy baptism. Each day as we live in our baptism, as we hear the Word of God, as we feast, on the body and blood of the Lamb of God, we continue to wash our robes as the blood of Christ daily washes away each spot and each stain left by sin. This vision that St. John sees ends with the entire church enjoying the eternal communion and fellowship with God. St. John continues, or rather the elder speaking to John continues, therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he, who's, he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This vision ends with the Lamb of God who has conquered, leading his flock to the green pastures of paradise where there will be nothing that will ever harm them again because God is their shelter as they live in his presence. Is there no wonder that there are songs of praise that have been sung, songs of praise that continue to be sung, and songs of praise that will be sung for all of eternity. While those who have died in Christ enjoy this communion with God right now, and we also when we die, this grand, glorious picture finds its consummation, finds its completion in the resurrection on the last day. You see, that's the whole reason why Christ came in the first place, to undo death. His resurrection on Easter is the first fruits of which we will be part of that great harvest to come when Christ returns. This vision, this tapestry of the church is a picture of hope that is ours right now and not yet. A picture of hope for today and for tomorrow and for all eternity. In the name of Jesus, the Lamb of God who has conquered, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Savior, to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit us together, together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joys that you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And receive the Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant to you his peace. Amen.
I'm Pastor Adam Moline, Associate Pastor here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska, where Main Street Living, Lincoln, is filmed. We want to thank you for watching our program this morning. We pray that it's been a blessing to you. In the same vein, if it has been a blessing to you, we ask you to help support our ministry. You can send donations to 3825 Wildbriar Avenue, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68516. Make them addressed to Main Street Living, Lincoln. We thank you for watching this morning, and we pray God's continued blessings upon you through His Son, Jesus Christ, our, His crucified and risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living Lincoln, 3825 Wildbriar Lane, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68516. Or visit us online at MainStreetLiving.com. This has been a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the Nebraska District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod and its member churches.